In this video, we are going to learn about the nomenclature of alkanes. And the nomenclature of alkanes in turn represents foundation for nomenclature or naming of all of the organic compounds. Nomenclature for naming alkanes is so-called systematic nomenclature or UPAC nomenclature. So that's nomenclature where rules of nomenclature, rules for naming of chemical compounds are set by International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry or UPAC. So rules for naming of alkanes, which form foundation for naming of all other organic compounds, are set by UPAC. First, for simplest alkanes, those with uh, one to four carbon atoms, they are given their names when they were discovered. And those names have been adopted as systematic or UPAC names. And so those four alkanes are methane, one carbon, two carbons, ethane, three carbons, propane, four carbons, butane. Rest of the alkanes are named based on the number of carbon atoms, so corresponding Greek or Latin number is used to indicate number of carbon atoms in a molecule. So five carbons, pentane, six carbons, hexane, seven carbons, heptane, eight octane, nine nonane and 10 decane. Typically, in an introductory organic chemistry course, student needs to know only these 10. So you need to memorize these 10. For more than that, then um, it may get, get a little bit difficult because it's not clear when Greeks, when Latin roots are used. And that does get at times a bit confusing because there are no rules. They appear to have been used at random. Now, alkyl groups or substituents are named after the name of the corresponding alkanes. So what we do is we drop suffix A and E of alkane and replace it with alkyl for alkyl group. And so as substituents, methane becomes methyl, ethane ethyl, propane propyl, and so on. So for example, something like nonane would become nonyl, decane, decyl. Branched alkanes have more complex naming. And so a compound like this is named by first identifying the longest chain. So here in blue, the longest chain is indicated. And if we count number of atoms, you will find that there are eight atoms in that chain. So we name that chain as octane. So first we name the root or the longest chain. So that's the root of the name. And naming actually works backwards. So that's going to be the last part of the name, the last word in the name. So this would be the molecule. And now next we name the substituent. And that substituent is methyl group. So this would be methyl octane. And then here uh, it's easier actually to do the naming if formula is line formula. So we have here line formula. So we have methyl octane. But now we need to indicate on which carbon methyl group is. And we can number this chain in two ways, from right to left or left to right. And so numbering left to right, shown at the bottom in blue, gives number three to methyl group. Numbering right to left, shown in red, gives number six to methyl group. Well, naming rules state that substituent should get the smallest possible number. And if there is more than one substituent, then substituents get the smallest possible set of numbers. Now, set of numbers, simply you add the numbers up and whichever numbers give you the smaller sum, that's the smaller set of numbers. So this is 3-methyl octane. So 6-methyl octane would have been wrong. 3-methyl octane is correct name. When it comes to uh, Exam questions, be very careful in finding the longest chain. Often students assume that chain that is drawn horizontally, zigzag chain that is drawn horizontally is the longest chain. And if you assume that here, you would have assumed that six carbon chain is the longest chain and possibly named it to ethyl hexane, but that's wrong. Actually, you have to follow a chain that is the longest. In this case, you can find chain uh, numbered in black that has seven carbons, and that's heptane. So that means that the root of the name is heptane, 
and then on a third carbon of that seven carbon chain there is methyl group as a substituent so this is three methyl heptane here we have very complex compound and for example exam question may be how many carbons the longest chain has or how many carbons will the root name or uh, have and when you do a calculation or verify the longest chain and then count the carbons in that chain 14 carbons have in the parent chain or root of the name now some sometimes we have more than one chain that has the same number of carbon atoms so we can identify here carbon chain that that is shown in red and then here we have carbon chain shown in green and actually if you look at the number of carbon atoms you will find that they actually, they have the same number of carbon atoms each of those chains has 10 carbon atoms but obviously they are different so then which of the two is going to be the parent chain which of them is going to form the root of the name it's going to be one that has more substituents so you count how many substituents each chain has one on the left shown in red has three substituents green has four substituents that's parent chain and the reason why chain with more substituents is the parent chain is that that chain is easier to name because if there are more substituents they are simpler and then they are easier to name you can uh, try that by naming each of these substituents and you will find that they are easier to name now some of these branched substituents you still don't know how to name you will learn how to name them in the next video and so then some of these rules be may become more clear when multiple substituents are present on the parent chain then we have to name and number all of the substituents and so in this example a parent chain is shown as horizontal zigzag line and for emphasis substituents that are branching off from parent chain are shown in bold so we need to name each of those substituents and from left to right they are propyl three carbons ethyl two carbons and methyl one carbon and then we would name and number these substituents so we just name them we list them alphabetically and give them the smallest possible set of numbers you will see complete process on different examples now we are only naming substituents but listing them alphabetically would be ethyl methyl propyl and then we look at the chain it has 10 carbons so it would be ethyl methyl propyl decane and of course there has there have to be numbers associated with ethyl methyl and propyl in this example we have actually rather complex branched substituents and they are s-butyl and t-butyl now what are s-butyl and t-butyl and some other substituent names you will learn in the next video so after you watch next video you may want to come back and watch this video again and here are some more examples if we have two or more substituents that are identical then we use adequate prefixes like di tri tetra in this case we call it we call these two substituents diethyl because we have two ethyl substituents or in this case three methyl substituents is going to be trimethyl and then if we have large number of substituents uh, some of which uh, are two of a kind some three of a kind then we use appropriate prefixes in this case it will be triethyl dimethyl as you can see when it comes to alphabetizing substituents ethyl comes before methyl and prefix that indicates number of substituents is not alphabetized so even though this is triethyl and then dimethyl still triethyl comes before dimethyl because ethyl alphabetically comes before methyl so prefixes di tri tetra are not alphabetized also prefixes that are separated from rest of the name by a dash like s and t are not alphabetized but those that are part of the name of the substituent such as neo or cyclo are alphabetized so here are two more substituents uh, this is t-butyl methyl again to, to show that t as a part of the prefix as a prefix as a part of the substituent name is not alphabetized so butyl still comes before methyl and here we have isopropyl methyl and that's because iso is alphabetized because it's part of the name it's not separated from the rest of the name 
So its prefix, it is part of the name of the substituent. So it isopropyl comes before methyl. Now that you know how to name substituents, final step is to learn how to correctly number them, and then you can complete, complete the naming of an arcane. So here is one example. The parent chain here has eight carbon atoms, so this is an octane, and there are three substituents on it. From left to right, they are isopropyl, methyl, and ethyl. So you list them alphabetically, that's going to be ethyl, isopropyl, methyl. Finally, you have to number them. So octane can be numbered, octane chain can be numbered from left to right or right to left. Left to right is given in red and right to left in blue. So left to right numbering gives three substituents, numbers 4, 5 and 6. While right to left, 3, 4 and 5. Clearly, 3, 4 and 5 is a smaller set of numbers and those are the three numbers that are assigned to substituents. So now we list three substituents, each with its own associated number. We separate numbers from the rest of the name by a dash. If there is more than one number that has to be separated from each other, we separate them by a comma. So we separate numbers from the rest of the name by a dash and list substituents alphabetically. So as you can see, it's 3-ethyl, 5-isopropyl, 4-methyl octane. Alternative numbering would have been wrong. Note that we have listed substituents alphabetically without regard for the numbers. So they're not listed in the increasing uh, numbers, in the order of increasing numbers, by, but alphabetically. Here is another example. So here you can pause video, name this yourself, and then check that numbering 4 ethyl 25 dimethyl heptane is correct. So in this case, we have this prefix di, and prefix di calls for two numbers. We have to use two numbers to indicate positions of two methyl groups, so 25. And on the right, addition is shown to show that 2, 4, and 5 is indeed the smallest possible set of numbers. So if there is prefix di, that means that two numbers have to be associated with it, and they have to be separated from each other by a comma. If there is prefix tri, then there will be three numbers, tetra four numbers, and so on. So, so here we have another example, and in this case we actually have a tie. It's ethyl methyl hexane, and numbering from left to right or right to left gives us the same set of numbers, 3 and 4. So it's either going to be 3 ethyl 4 methyl or 4 ethyl 3 methyl. It's only in this case that first listed substituent is given a smaller number. So to break the tie, first listed substituent gets smaller number. So it's 3-ethyl-4-methyl-hexane. And finally, when substituents are identical and they are attached to the same carbon, don't forget to use prefix di and to include enough numbers. Prefix di calls for two numbers. So correct name of this compound is 2,2-dimethylhexane. Frequently, students make mistake, and these are two types of mistakes either not including enough numbers, which means naming it as 2-dimethylhexane. Well, since it's dimethyl, if you use only one number 2, if you list only one number 2, question is, where is the other methyl group? It could be on carbons 2, 3, 4, 5. Or alternative error is 2,2-methylhexane. Well, if, if there are two numbers, 2, 2, then there must be two substituents, and you listed only one, methyl. What is the other substituent? And so, Correct number is correct, sorry, correct name involves two numbers and prefix di, so 2 2 dimethyl hexane. Now we can examine nomenclature of cycloalkanes. It's actually a trivial extension of nomenclature of alkanes. We simply use prefix cyclo to indicate that parent chain is a ring, that it's a cyclic compound. Here are four simplest cycloalkanes. So simplest ring has three carbon atoms. So simplest cycloalkane is cyclopropane, then cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane. And note how simple line formulas of cycloalkanes are. In fact, line formulas were originally introduced into organic chemistry to indicate cycloalkanes or to represent cycloalkanes. 
If cycloalkane has a substituent, then of course we name that substituent. So first example in a top row on the left is methyl cyclopropane. So substituent is methyl, parent chain cyclopropane, so methyl cyclopropane. Next one is ethyl cyclobutane. Both methyl and ethyl substituents are on carbon 1 of the respective parent chains, cyclopropane and cyclobutane, but we don't indicate number 1. It's understood that it's on the number 1. So it would be wrong to name these two one methyl cyclopropane or one ethyl cyclobutane. It's simply methyl cyclopropane, ethyl cyclobutane. Don't fall into a trap in assuming that ring is always the parent chain. It's the longest chain that is the parent chain. So in this next example, on the right, parent chain is hexane because it has six carbons. So cyclopropyl is the substituent and the name of this compound is 2-cyclopropyl hexane. Simply 2-cyclopropyl, 2 is the carbon that cyclopropyl is attached to, carbon 2 of hexane. And in the next example, cyclopentyl group is attached to carbon 1 of the hexane, so it's 1-cyclopentyl hexane. And here are some more complex examples. If there are two substituents, then both substituents have to be named and numbered. And now we have to use number one to indicate that one of the substituents is on carbon one and then the other substituent is whatever carbon it is. And because in the ring there is always a tie, then first listed substituent is always substituent one. So in this case, we have ethyl methyl cyclobutane. Substituents are ethyl and methyl. And since ethyl is listed before methyl, ethyl is always going to be number one. So it's one ethyl, three methyl cyclobutane. In the middle example, we have two methyl groups. So it's going to be dimethyl. One methyl is on carbon one, the other one is on carbon three. And it doesn't matter whether two carbons, we number them clockwise or counterclockwise, it is always the same set of numbers, one, three. So it's one, three dimethyl cyclopentane. And finally, example on the right is a little bit more complex. We have two ethyl groups and they are on the same carbon. So it's 1,1-diethyl, 3-methyl cyclohexane. And it has to be 1,1-diethyl, 3-methyl, because that's smaller set of numbers. Alternative numbering 3,3-diethyl, 1-methyl would be a larger set of numbers. So again, smallest set of numbers rule still applies. And finally, we have a situation where we have an open chain and a ring. And then the question is, which chain is the parent chain? Because both chains have the same number of carbons. So we have a tie basically between two chains. When that's the case, then ring is considered to be parent chain. We break the tie by giving ring the parent chain. So this compound is going to be named as cyclopentane, not pentane. And 3-pentyl cyclopentane, number 3 indicates that it's carbon 3 of the pentyl group that is attached to cyclopentane. This is a bit more complex example. And actually strictly applying UPAC rules, which we are not covering in this video, this should be named 1-ethylpropyl cyclopentane. So this completes nomenclature of alkanes. And next, we are going to, in next video, we are going to examine primary, secondary, and tertiary and quaternary carbon atoms and how those designations are used to name branched substituents.